In this video, we're going to learn about a direct modeling workflow to give us access to converted form bodies at the same time the form exists. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, I wanted to respond to a comment that I got on one of my forms videos asking about a modifier such as Blender's shrink wrap. Now we don't have anything like that in Fusion 360. We have a few things that sort of emulate it or get us pretty close, but there's nothing that's exactly the same. However, it brought up an interesting workflow idea and I wanted to just cover it really quickly, at least in the context of some of the things that we can do. We already know from experience that if we create a form in Fusion 360 and we just create anything, it doesn't matter what the shape is, if we finish that form, we have a B rep. If we're editing the form in the bodies folder, we have a form body. So in this situation, when we're capturing design history, they can only exist independently of each other. We're either in a form state or in the B rep solid or surface state. However, if we turn off capture design history, what ends up happening is both of these can exist at the same time. You'll notice that we have the solid body and we still have the form body. It also opens up our form menu. We don't have to create a form body in order to access these tools. So let's take a quick look at an example of the workflow that we might use in order to just make use of this. So I'm gonna once again, just create a box doesn't really matter what the shape is. And I'm gonna turn this into a surface by just selecting and deleting a couple faces. I'm gonna to go to utilities, convert. I'm gonna select this as a T-spline to B-rep and say, okay. So once again, I have the T-spline still available and I have a converted surface. Next, I'm gonna to go to my surface tools. I'm gonna to go to create and offset. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna offset it inward a little bit. So once again, I'm directly working on the surfaces. I still have the form body and we can manipulate and work with both of those at the same time. So you might be wondering, why would we possibly want to do this? Well, the main reason and the reason that this question came up is because sometimes you want a clean underlying surface that you can use to control your curvature. So what we can do in this case is we can take a look at first modifying and manipulating this geometry. So maybe I decide that I want to pull this edge forward and make some changes to the shape. And let's say that I want to create some geometry to go back to this face. Well, we could divide this up, but I'm going to do a little shortcut and I'm going to subdivide a couple of faces just to give me more geometry to work with. Then I'm going to take two of these. I'm going to use Alt on the keyboard and I'm going to extrude this back. So again, hold down Alt and we're just going to pull this back. With those faces still selected, we're going to use modify and delete or delete on the keyboard. So you can see now we've taken some faces back and they're just sort of sitting in space. Well, this is where the tool pull comes in handy. We can take any of these vertices, and in this case, I'm going to take all of them, and we can either push them to a selected target or we can have it auto project to the closest surface. We can say that we want to move the surface points or the control points. And depending on your specific situation, you might decide to do one over the other. Just note, if you don't have enough divisions to match whatever curve you're trying to push to, this might be problematic. So play around with those options and see which works best. Now we can go to utilities and we can convert this T-spline body to a surface. And now we have these two. Then we can use our surface tools. We're gonna to trim. So this can be a little bit tricky when they overlap each other. This is our trim tool. I'm gonna to make sure that I hide the trim tool. This makes it a little bit easier for me to select that body. And then I can bring both back. So you can see now I've got that inside surface and these two can be knitted together. So I'm gonna use knit or stitch, make sure that we put both of them together. We should see a green edge here. If you're seeing the, the error here, then that means the tolerance is a little too small. You might have to increase it. It really just depends on the number of divisions you have in your form body. Well, let's go ahead and let's bring back this original surface and our form body here. 
Note that this is still available, even though we converted it to a BREP, we still have that form version of it. So now what we could also do is we could use our form tools for modify and pull, and we can take these vertices and we can push them to the selected surface. Now again, it's important that we understand when we're talking about things like control points versus surface points, as it will change the result. So you can see surface makes it match exactly. Control, we're really looking at something like a box display and we're pushing those box points directly to that surface. So in this case, probably using the surface point is gonna be a better option. So once again, this is not parametric, which means that we can still select these form faces and we can move them because they're not gonna be permanently linked. So it's different than things like the shrink wrap modifier in Blender because it's not going to maintain that history. However, it does allow us a little bit of a shortcut to let us pull these two together, at least temporarily. Now, again, this workflow is a little unique because we have to turn off capture design history, but it might be a good way for you to temporarily convert or export form bodies to be used as controls. If you have any questions on this or anything else, obviously, please let me know. You can comment on this video or you can send me an email support at caducator.com. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.